Welcome to our special guest interview slot for this weekend. I'm delighted to have, to, to have with me today, Vipul Chef from Advanced Track Outsourcing. Good day, sir. Hi, good day, Rob. How are you? Well, fantastic. Lovely to have you with us. Vipul, for people that haven't come across you and Advanced Track, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, well, I'm by me personally, by background, I'm a chartered accountant, but what Advanced Track does is help accountancy firms and bookkeepers change the dial in terms of what an accountant can provide for a client really freeing them up to do more um, of the good work that they've been doing well, why do accountants need that right now they're incredibly busy uh, compliance needs to be dealt with uh, there are huge uh, challenges of getting good people um, we have a pool of good people that keeps the compliance work moving along but uses the skills of the onshore people to really serve their clients better. Mm. You've been in this game how long now, Vipul? Uh, we formally set the business up 18 years ago, uh, but after a couple of years of making lots of mistakes and stuff, I guess 15 years we've been really going at it. So, yeah. Mm. And the accounting profession has been through a lot over the years. Just generally, what kind of shape do you feel the profession is in right now? I think as a business, I don't think it's ever been more valued than in perhaps the last um, 15, 20 years. Uh, I think the pandemic has really shown the value that a professional accountant can do, um, help the businesses that they work with. I think that's become really evident. Uh, so I think in that sense, really good. Uh, the challenge that it has is uh, at the top that it's quite um, an aging population mm. and coming through uh, there are not as many people coming through and then staying within the profession they'll then go on to do other roles um, whether that's in industry or in general management yeah I do have seen throughout COVID times particularly firms that get it right and firms that have perhaps got it wrong so what in your view separates the good accounting firms and maybe even the good accountants from the great ones I think the biggest thing, and, and it's very easy to generalise, yeah. but the ones that have shown that they care, that I think has been the, the massive difference. I'm not to say they haven't. Uh, I think uh, the last 18 months, across the board, uh, everyone's really shown that they care for their clients. Um, I think the thing that will come through in the next sort of 18, 24 months as we come out is how many retain that and continue to use the goodwill uh, that they've generated over this period to really understand their clients better. And I think that's really exciting, actually, from my perspective, that I can see more firms doing more of the stuff that their clients really care about. So. Yeah, and, and you say firms are not sh firms show that they care. How do they show that they care? Because all accountants would claim to care. They know they've got a duty of care diligently from a compliance regulatory side of it. They've got to do stuff, but showing that you care, that's something different, presumably. It is. And, and every, you know, most accountants can keep their clients out of jail, so to speak, yeah. in terms of, yeah, they that's the bare them. minimum isn't it that's the bare minimum but i think the last 18 months uh, a lot of them have stepped up they've reached out uh, and not just at partner and senior levels uh, throughout the, the firm um, and that's really what we would see as being the big difference the ones that have used everybody within the business from the junior right up to the senior partner to reach out to the clients. They're the ones that we see growing in double digits um, right through uh, the last sort of 12, 18 months. Mm. Let's focus on growth for a moment. What do you feel the key challenges are for accounting professionals and the firms that they represent if they do want to grow in this marketplace? I think staff, good staff. Are yeah. really Capacity, hard. do you mean by that? Yeah, capacity. Um, number one, um, and actually retaining uh, those good people because, because there's this huge demand for the professional services staff. What's happening is the big firms are uh, increasing their salaries, 
which generally always moves the market. Um, uh, and it's intended to deliberately um, because the big firms can afford to pay more. Um, that then obviously puts pressure on everyone uh, below them as well. So, and, so I think that's it, definitely a factor. I'm putting you on the spot a little bit now by asking you for a, a percentage here, but generally in an accounting firm, particularly one of the larger ones, what percentage of, of income revenue generally goes on staff? I think the the bigger the firm um, as a percentage, I think historically, if you looked at the profession below the top firms, they always worked on the formula a third, a third, a third. Yeah. Uh, when you go right to the top, the labor element is a smaller propor proportion okay. than that. Um, and that's just always been been the way they've um, I, I couldn't tell you. I could, I could hazard a guess based on what I used to get paid and what I used to be charged <laughs> out by. Yeah, no, I get that. We, we've all got a sense of, of that equation. So where have some of the accounting firms fallen short in recent times? Perhaps have they got complacent? Have they felt that because COVID is around, clients are picking up the phone to them so they don't have to be proactive? Where would you go with that? I, I think. Uh, the pandemic is something that's hopefully a once in a lifetime event. And I yeah. don't think we should base any decisions on that. But I think more generally, um, as a profession, we've had the benefit of that recurring, that returning customer. Mm. Uh, so there's an element of, well, they'll be back next year when next year's accounts need doing, the tax needs doing. And whereas actually in most walks of life, you have to reinvent yourself uh, because you need to attract not only your old customers, but you need to attract new customers to, to keep your business growing. And I, and I think if anything, that is what I would say is where um, people, not everyone, and, I, and, I, and there is a very distinct difference between those that do that, which is fairly the, at the base level. I think the, the ones that haven't stepped up, probably COVID has made life very difficult for them because they've perhaps not had that care culture within, mm. the, within the business, which has then made it harder for them to really pivot and serve the, the clients that have really wanted and needed the help these last 18 months. Yeah. Now, you're one of the leading providers of outsourcing capacity for accounting firms. What kind of challenges or problems or pain points would they be having for them to say, right, we need to get advanced track outsourcing and Vipul Chef in here? Um, I guess some of it is they, um, they've either had long-term sickness or is one factor, perhaps. But I think more than that, it is, our staff are overrun, they're tired, um, they're busy doing this, uh, talking to clients all day. And it means there's, the, you know, we talked about at the start of this, uh, there's this work that absolutely needs to be done just to keep them out of jail. Mm. That work is just piling up and they're then not able to even do the, the basic compliance work. And they're, therefore they need resource to help them fulfill that part whilst they continue to, to keep talking and helping the clients. Yeah, and you hinted at recruitment as well. They just might have those job vacancies there that they can't fill. Yeah, mm. very much so. Which produces capacity problems. We get that. What are the common pushbacks with accounting firms that you talk to, Vipul, that go away from outsourcing or don't feel that it's justified? How do they reason that? I think part of it is um, sometimes it's moral that you know they want to support local okay. um, people and the local um, environment you know local community so to speak um, and I totally respect that I benefited from a firm that trained me um, but I, what I would always say to people is do you always want to be doing work at the basic level or do you want your people to develop and uh, do the more interesting uh, things um, th that really help your clients grow uh, mm -hmm. because if you're helping your clients grow you you attract other 
growing clients. Um, it's just the way of the world. Winners yeah. tend to attract winners. Sure. And you've grown up in the UK, but you have an Indian heritage. Talk to us about how the labour market in the accountancy profession particularly has moved over the years. I, I think um, there's, like everything, um, uh, the accountancy firms are always driven in, you know, in good times, they hire a lot. Um, in bad times, uh, particularly at the bigger end, they cut very quickly. And, uh, and as a result, what ends up happening is you get gaps in the employment market um, where you, you just don't have enough people of a certain level. So I think there's always been that sort of stop-start approach to uh, employing people, um, which creates those natural gaps. So I think there's an element of that. Um, and the other side of it is less and less firms actually train. So it relies upon the larger firms within the um, business uh, to actually do the training. And there's an argument that a, a lot of good training happens in smaller firms because you actually are able to do everything. Yeah. Um, and that's often the challenge that um, when a smaller firm re uh, recruits somebody, it's like, oh, you've never done tax or mm. um, you've never done, uh, you've never produced a set of accounts. And that's really hard if all they've ever done is an audit. Yeah, there's been a realisation too, hasn't it, for accounting firms that not everyone needs to be recruited locally, not everyone needs to come from that country, not everyone needs to come in the office. So the global market becomes international, doesn't it? It absolutely does. Yeah, very much so. So what should be the hiring policy, in your view, for accounting firms that do want to grow and stand out and fulfil that capacity and make people less busy so they can do more of the interesting work? I think one of the partners we uh, have worked with for over a decade, it's top 50 firm, he, he phrased it the best way possible. He said to me, Bipal, we now don't recruit people to man the engine room. We recruit people who are comfortable, sat in front of a business owner who wants to talk about their life and their business. That is the type of person we now recruit because that is the necessary skill for the accountants going forward, not to be able to just produce a set of accounts. It's a skill they need to understand in terms of how the mechanics of it work, but most importantly, they need to be able to have that conversation. That's really interesting. And, and therefore, with the pool of talent that you have access to, do you create that engine room for them? Or do you actually supply them with those people that can be in front of a client as well? No, we're very much the engine room. Right. And we've, and that was I, I, the bit that I missed out of that conversation. He says, we don't need to recruit the engine room because we have you guys. So right. it, it's an absolutely an essential part of their business. Mm. But what they want are people who have the potential to be partners within their firm in the future. And they, they understand that it is not somebody who is just a technician. It is somebody who can <coughs> grow, excuse me, grow the business and engage with customers and the two go hand in hand. Yeah, definitely. And with the technology we have available, the way we can protect data across different countries and cultures and boundaries, it's as safe as and effective as any time before to outsource the talent, isn't it? Very much, very much. Uh, you, you know, we, we all within the industry, I believe, try and do as much as we can um, and there's lots of um, separate uh, work that we carry out and audit, uh, get audited uh, to ensure that we're able to, to fulfil the data protection requirements that are now, becoming increasingly onerous. Now, I don't know if you have a crystal ball there, Vipul, but if we were to ask you to cast your mind to the next few years, what's coming up for the accounting profession? I think there's been a lot of talk in the past about advisory, um, and I think that is going to become more and more prevalent. And I think particularly as the governments around the world want to pay for all the support they've given business, um, they're going to look to collect tax faster. Um, and that's where MTD in the UK and similar uh, projects across the world are going to become more relevant. So the digital accounting 
uh, process, um, cloud accounting, so that we're able to help forecast what the cash needs of a business are going to be. I think they're going to be very, very important. Um, but in order to do that, you need to have good systems, good processes, um, and people who understand what to do with those numbers. Yeah, and presumably those firms that don't invest in the people and invest in the outsourcing and invest in the tech, they're going to get left behind, aren't they? Yes, uh, very much so. And, and we see, we've seen historically the firms that have not invested um, in three to five years, um, if you look where they started and where a similar firm started but was investing, the growth trajectory of the two is very, very different. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, what often happens is the good people in the slower growing firms actually leave to join the faster growing firms. Yeah, fascinating. So, Vipul, as an individual, I've known you a few years, you're very passionate about the way you go about your business. What do you love most about what you do? I think, uh, like, I'm sure you've heard this story from me before, Rob. Um, but for me, I I was a young kid with parents who had ambitions to to make our life better as their children. And uh, for me, it's very much the accountants who want to help their clients achieve their ambitions, whether it's for themselves or their wider families mm. and stakeholders. For me, that's really what it's all about. That. If accountants are doing that, they're helping UK PLC as well, because more successful businesses mean more money in the pockets of the people within the businesses and the people that they trade with. And I think for me, that's super, super important. Yeah, you have a very strong work ethic. You're very driven. I know that a lot of that comes from your family and your upbringing. But do you have a personal philosophy for success? Um, I, if you, um, I would say to always tell the truth. Uh, and be honest sometimes gets me into trouble <laughs> um, it's fair to say but I think it by having that philosophy you very much are able to go to sleep at night knowing yeah what I did I'm comfortable with everyone knows where they stand and that that's that's the way that I, I conduct my life and my business yeah that makes sense the softest pillow is a clear conscience they say don't they indeed yeah so is there a particular book or a movement or a thinker that has shaped your outlook for life and business? I think um, the biggest influence for me, because I guess um, I lived it from an early age, would be my parents. Yeah. Um, from a very young age, um, from the age of seven, I've been um, w working alongside them. So I've seen their work ethic. But I think more than anything, the one thing, even when I started this business, that they always said to me is, do what you do brilliantly. And if you do that, everything else then follows. Mm. Um, wh whatever you want in life, you, if you do what you do brilliantly, that you can't just say, I'm going to become rich or I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. It comes from that long-term uh, goal of doing what you do really, really well and you'll be respected by your peers and the industry you serve as a, yeah. as a consequence. So what advice would you give to our accounting listeners on this show? They're wanting to push forward with a career. They want more of a voice in the firm. They want to increase their influence. They want to have more of an impact, perhaps be more successful if you want it in those terms. What advice would you give to them? Um, so is this what somebody... Uh, who's a, a manager or a junior within a firm or somebody on their way to being the boss? Have you got different advice for both of those? I, I guess I do. General advice? Let's yeah, have both I, of them. I <laughs> yeah. So, if so the ones junior, that have not yet made it and the ones that have made it, but want to sustain the, uh, the legacy, if you like. Yeah, okay. So, so the ones that are on their journey, mm -hmm. I think it's really important to knock on the door keep asking questions right. um, because if you don't do that you're not going to make the most of your the opportunities in front of you and to, just to give you an example uh, the firm that I trained in the first few weeks and months um, my the department I was in I perhaps didn't get as much work as I should have got 
I went and knocked on the partner's door and turned around and said, Albert, I'm coming in every day. I'm not getting enough work. And um, he, he said, right, I'll move you into another department. And as a result of that, when they did make a redundancy call, 12, less than 12 months later, I was super busy and therefore was able to continue to my career and fulfill my ambitions. And there were others who perhaps didn't go and do that and therefore did not survive that. So I think you need to make the most of the opportunities that are there. And that means you need to ask lots of questions and challenge yourself more. Yeah. And for those that have made it, um, I think always be open and um, encourage the really good talent that, that's within your firm. Um, because the more you do that, uh, they don't need to be a mirror of you either. And I think that's important because I've never been a yes man. And, um, and as a result, I'm perhaps a little bit different. But you know what? Those uh, bosses of mine that have understood that, have always got the best out of me. And, uh, and I think that's really, really important. Yeah, that's brilliant. People, if people want to talk to you and have a conversation about what you're doing at Advanced Track Outsourcing, what's a good way for them to reach you? Um, LinkedIn, uh, but on our website, uh, advancedtrack.com, there's a start here button. And if you click on that, fill in a short form, you get um, access to our online diaries and either myself or somebody within the team will have a chat with you. And how does that initial conversation go? What kind of things do you ask them? To be honest with you, it, it's um, it's never a sales call. It's really look getting to know you, understand what your business is, what your ambitions are, and then only after you do that can you then actually help them. And it kind of comes back to what our uh, our clients do. They don't just turn up and say oh we'll sell you a set of accounts or we'll sell you a tax return service it's very much tell me about you what you want what you want to achieve um and if it's following that same philosophy really yeah that's really good and uh, just finally give us a sense of what's on your desk right now what's the biggest thing you're working on currently Bipple? um uh, as a tech business we always have technology conversations within our business um, but we're really growing our team, and I think that's uh, that's a big part of what's going on over the next 12 months is actually building out that senior team within our business uh, to take it forward for the next three to five years. Well, if anyone knows about recruiting for growth, it would be you, Vipul Chef. Thank you so much for your time and your insights today. That's been brilliant. <laughs> no, thank you, Rob. You've been watching or listening to the Accounting Influencers podcast featuring hosts Rob Brown and Martin Bissett with key interviews, what's working in the accounting profession and news from the accounting and fintech world that helps you do your jobs better. We go out to 144 countries, over 20,000 unique listeners with 100,000 downloads and it is accredited for continued professional education and development. Thank you for tuning in.